Okay, we are going to continue with our Chapter 8 quadrilateral information, and this video is just going to fo focus on rectangles. Um, rectangles and rhombuses and squares are all in less than 8.4, but I'm going to do three separate videos for them. It should help keep them short as well. So this is an 8.4, and let's start off with a rectangle, um, a definition of a rectangle. Okay. A rectangle is a quadrilateral with four congruent angles. Right. Now, if you think about it, we know that using the n minus 2 times 180 formula, 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 times 180 is 360 degrees. If we divide that by 4, we'd get 90 degrees each. Okay, so we can kind of add that in here. 90 degrees each. And also, um, keep in mind that we can actually, if we think back to what we learned in lesson 8.3, a rectangle has to be a parallelogram. Okay, if it's got four congruent angles, then the opposite angles are congruent, obviously. And if the opposite angles are congruent, then it has to be a parallelogram. So, it is a quadrilateral with four congruent angles, but it's also uh, a special kind of parallelogram. So we're going to make a little note here. It has to be a parallelogram. And this is the symbol for a parallelogram. You may have seen that in some of the homework questions or whatever. But all right, so a rectangle has to be a parallelogram. Okay, so let's draw a couple examples. So first we'll draw kind of our typical rectangle. All right, we'll put our four right angles in here. Right. We could add our uh, parallel sides as well if we wanted to, but this is just the part of the definition. Now, draw another rectangle, and it kind of looks like a square. It might be one. I'm not really sure. But I want you to realize that a rectangle can be a square. The definition of a rectangle doesn't say anything about the sides. Now, you know, because it's a parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent. But it's possible that these sides, all four sides, could be congruent. We just don't know for sure. Right? So it could be a square. It doesn't have to be. Right? So now let's go ahead and let's look at our sides, our angles, our diagonals, and then finally down here are others. So let's start with sides. Remember we had this stuff from before on this sheet. Okay, so let's look at this right here. Yeah, these different things. Okay, so sides. Opposite sides are parallel. Okay, is that true? Well, yeah. We said it has to be a parallelogram, remember? So if it's a parallelogram, then yes, A has to be true. Opposite sides have to be parallel. It has to be two sets, and that comes from the definition, again, definition of a parallelogram. Okay, not necessarily a definition of a rectangle, but because a rectangle is a parallelogram, it would come from the definition of a parallelogram. Okay, the next one says, uh, back up the sides here, opposite sides are congruent. Once again, two sets or one set. Well, that would be true, B2, and that's because of theorem 8.3. Now, we're not going to memorize those by numbers, but it comes back to parallelograms again. Theorem 8.3 said in a parallelogram, the opposite sides have to be congruent, both sets. And since a rectangle is a parallelogram, this is still going to be true. Okay, let's look at the, the next thing. All sides are congruent. Now, that is possible for a rectangle, maybe something that looks like this, but it's not required, so we're not going to write it down. Okay, letter D, consecutive sides are congruent. Okay, so does this side up here have to be congruent to its consecutive side? No. Does this side here have to be congruent to this one? No. Now, could they be? Yes, but we're not going to write it down if it's a, well, it could be kind of thing. The right? only thing we're writing down are things that have to be true, so that's it nothing really changes. And that makes sense because the sides, there's nothing special about the sides of a rectangle. Okay, the definition doesn't talk about that. All right, so let's move to angles. Now the definition did talk about angles, so it's probably going to be some new information here in the angle section. So let's look at our statements. So under angles, opposite angles are congruent. Two sets or one set. Now opposite angles are definitely going to be congruent. So A2, it's going to be two sets. If we look back at our picture, here's one set, here's a second set, okay, so two sets. Now there's two different things you could put here. You could use theorem 
it says in a parallelogram there are two sets of opposite congruent angles and we know rectangles are parallelograms however we could also use a definition the definition says it's got four congruent angles so if all the angles are congruent then definitely the opposite angles are congruent so I'm just gonna write definition all right. next one okay so consecutive angles are supplementary consecutive angles are supplementary all right so well, we know they're all 90 degrees, right? So would these two angles right here add equal 180? Absolutely. What about these two? Yes. What about these two? Yes. And the top two? Yes. So that's, again, four sets. Two over here, that's one set. Second set. Third set. Fourth set. Okay, so B4. Now, once again, we could use the same theorem we used over here. Since a rectangle has to be a parallelogram, these theorems are going to work. A little tougher to use the definition on this one. Definition just says they're congruent. It doesn't say anything about supplementary. So we'll go ahead and stick with theorem 8.5 on this one. In any parallelogram, which would include rectangles, there are four sets of consecutive supplementary angles. Okay. What's next? All angles are congruent. Okay. All angles are congruent. Is that true? Well, yeah, that's the definition. And by the way, I'm going to I'm going to come back here in a second. We're going to shorten up that definition, maybe give you a slightly easier version. Okay, but all angles are congruent. Yeah, absolutely. C is true, and that's, that is the definition. Okay, definition of rectangle. All the angles are congruent. All right, next one. Consecutive angles are congruent. Four sets or two sets. Okay, so let's look back at our picture. We know they're all right angles, so these are consecutive angles. Are they congruent? Yeah, that's one set. What about the bottom two? Are they congruent? Yes, that's a second set. Are these congruent? Yes, that's a third set. And up there we have a fourth set. So D is true. We got four sets. And once again, that comes from the definition. If all of the angles are congruent, then definitely the consecutive angles are congruent. I told you we were going to go back and change this definition or maybe give you a slightly different one. We could actually define rectangle in just two words if we really wanted to. I want you to think about whether or not you can figure out two words that would define a rectangle. Anyone think of two words that would define a rectangle, focusing on this fact that four congruent angles, well, basically all congruent angles, what, what does all congruent angles mean? Okay, you guys remember this one, equiangular? Okay, so we could say they're a rectangle. I'm gonna try to squeeze it in right here. An equiangular quadrilateral, and I'm going to have to abbreviate. Maybe you can fit that in a little bit better on yours, but equiangular quadrilateral. So that would be a two-word definition of a rectangle. All right, okay, well, let's move on here. Let's go to diagonals. Okay, so let's come back to our diagonals. A says the diagonals bisect each other. Well, remember this? In any parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. That's what this theorem told us. Well, a rectangle is a parallelogram, so this is going to be true. Theorem 8.6. Okay, B, diagonals are congruent to each other. All right, so, well, that wasn't necessarily true for a parallelogram. This one's a little bit interesting. Let's take a look at this one. Diagonals are congruent to each other. All right, here we go. Let's draw ourselves a rectangle. And I'm going to call this A and B and C and D. I'm going to draw that diagonal. And I'm going to draw that diagonal. Okay, now, basically we're trying to figure out AC is congruent to BD. Is that true? Okay. Well, it's a little hard to do in this picture the way we have it right now, so I'm going to, I'm going to separate it. Okay, we're going to take this triangle right here. And I'm also going to take this triangle right here. And I'm going to separate these two triangles. We're going to take a look at those. Okay, so let's draw them out separate. There's that first one, A, D, C. And then the second one, I'm going to do kind of down below it here. Okay. And that went up toward B. We still have D and C here and B up there. Okay. So if you kind of see how that came out of this picture, so A, D, C is right here. And then on the other one, we had B, C, D. B, C, D. Okay. All right. Now, let's look at this. We know from 
fact that it's a rectangle that this has to be a right angle and this has to be a right angle. DC is congruent to DC, congruent to itself, reflects the property of congruence. All right, AD and BC, let's look back at the original picture. AD, BC are opposite sides, opposite sides of any parallelogram are congruent. So AD is going to be congruent to BC. That's one of our theorems we learned back in lesson 8.2. We're not gonna memorize them by numbers, all right, but you should know that in any parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent. Well, look at our triangles, what do we have? It's not HL, okay, we do have a right angle, but we don't need HL, here's the hypotenuse. All right, it's just side angle side. Right angles congruent to right angles by the right angle congruence theorem. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, reflexive property of congruence. So these triangles are congruent by the side angle side congruence postulate, which means AC is congruent to BD because of CPCTC. So we don't need a question mark anymore. That is a true statement. AC is congruent to BD. So what did we just prove? Go back to our original picture. AC is this diagonal, BD is that diagonal, and we proved that those diagonals are congruent. So if we come to this, diagonals are congruent to each other. Is that true? Yes. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take B, and we're gonna write B down here under the diagonal box, okay? So B. Now, we proved it, right? So it should be a theorem, and I'm flipping in the book. Let's see if they have it numbered. They do, theorem 8.13. Now, once again, we aren't gonna memorize these by numbers. You're not gonna use the numbers in your homework. The only reason I'm giving you the numbers is so you can match it up with what's in your book. Now, in the book, theorem 8.13 says this, a parallelogram is a rectangle if and only if its diagonals are congruent. If and only if, remember, works both ways. So. If the diagonals are congruent, then uh, we know it's a rectangle. Now, that's if it started out as a parallelogram. That's important because later on we're going to have another shape with congruent diagonals that is not a parallelogram. Okay, so if you have a parallelogram and you know its diagonals are congruent, then it's a rectangle. That's one version of the if and only if. The other direction says if you have a parallelogram and you know it's a rectangle, then the diagonals have to be congruent. So it works both ways, but you definitely need to know that it's a parallelogram. Okay, let's look at another one. Diagonals are perpendicular to each other is the next thing we see here. Diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Now let's go back and look at this picture. Perpendicular. Well, we know they bisect each other, right? But is there any way I can prove that this is a right angle? Another question is, does it even look like it's close? I mean, this is, if I turn it this way, it's kind of horizontal. This doesn't look vertical at all. That's vertical. All right. Sometimes you can tell by looking at things that doesn't make sense at all. Now, we don't like to go by looks to prove something, but sometimes we can just kind of look at something and go, there's no way that's even going to be close to being true. All right. Let's say I draw a really elongated rectangle and I draw the diagonals. And I look at this. Is there any way that that is going to be a right angle? No, absolutely not. All right, so I'm not even going to bother trying to prove this one, okay? Let's look at the next one. Diagonals bisect opposite angles. All right, what that means is as the diagonal runs up into the corner here, it's going to cut this angle in half. So the question here is, is this angle right here congruent to this angle right here? Well, we know this is a 90 degree angle, so basically it comes down to is this 45 degrees and is this 45? Well, let's think about that. If this was 45 here, Back over here, this thing would have to be 90, right? The big one. And this would have to be 45. Kind of like if we looked here, this would have to be 45. That was the diagonal running up in the corner. And this would have to be 45. We know 45, 45, 90 triangles, two congruent angles, have to have two congruent sides. Well, this side doesn't have to be congruent to this side. They can be different in a rectangle. So there's no way that this has to be 45 up here, this one, and then 45 there, which would actually be kind of the one right above it. A separate triangle, or, yeah, and a separate triangle. So there's no way that's going to be true. It could be, but it does not have to be. So we're not going to write D down. All right. Let's go to the area. Area is the last thing. Okay. Um, deals with our other. It's mostly area. We have a couple other things we're going to talk about every now and then. All right. Base times height. Okay. Well, that worked for parallelograms, right? And since a rectangle is a parallelogram, it should work. We don't usually call it base and height when we deal with rectangles, okay? But we can because remember, base and height have to meet at a right angle. Well, the sides of a rectangle, looking back at our picture, meet at a right angle. 
So this could be the base, and this could be the height. Usually though, what do we call this? We usually call this the length and the width when we're dealing with rectangles. And that's what you're kind of used to usually from middle school or even earlier. So we have that written down here, area equals length times width, okay? And that's letter B. So we're gonna go ahead and say, yeah, we could use B as well, all right? Now, the next one, diagonal one times diagonal two over two. I mentioned this before, but anytime you multiply to find area, you need to be multiplying things that are perpendicular. So were the diagonals perpendicular? No, we already talked about that, okay? Side times side. Well, yeah, the sides are perpendicular, but when you square something, that means these things had to be the same. I can't take eight times six and say it's eight squared or six squared, okay? So these would have to be the same number, and in a rectangle, they aren't. If you look at this formula, we have two different bases here. A rectangle doesn't have two different bases, so we're not gonna use that. A mix between a rectangle and a rhombus, that doesn't make any sense, it is just a rectangle. And mid-segment, that's something we're gonna deal with with another shape, so that's it. Rectangles, all right, so stuff you need to know about rectangles. It's an equiangular quadrilateral, which means it has all four angles congruent, they're 90 degrees each, and therefore it has to be a parallelogram. Got a couple examples. What does A2 mean for sides? It means you have two sets of opposite parallel sides. You also have two sets of opposite congruent sides. You have two sets of opposite congruent angles, four sets of consecutive supplementary angles, all angles are congruent, and four sets of consecutive congruent angles. Diagonals bisect each other, diagonals are congruent to each other. Area equals base times height, or area equals length times width. That's the information you need to know for a rectangle.